allowed to use bikes too. We are allowed to ride our bikes. We shouldn't have to be, you know, brave to get on our bicycle. And um, that bikes are an important option, even if we don't ride them in the winter. So those are my. The first one is an interesting one in that there is a lot of attention being given to this issue of communicating about what's um, along the roadway. One of the features that um, saw a lot of attention in the late 1990s um, was one is, is associated with vehicles, whether it is trucks or buses or automobiles. And rather than putting up a lot of signage that um, becomes a visual distraction, um, they are placing within the vehicle, the, the vehicle itself, um, information where it's called um, roadway to vehicle or information system so that as you are progressing on the transit vehicle, as you are progressing um, in the truck or in, as mentioned, um, a long road trip, it'll provide you with information at this exit, there are these four things, five things, six things, and what the approximate distance is. So rather than having a lot of overhead visual clutter, they are able to provide you with that information on your vehicle is one of the options. It's not the only answer. It is not a comprehensive answer, but it is a part of the toolkit that's being looked at to, to use that. Um, there are other efforts underway to deal with the issue of what is appropriate for signing. And then part of that comes back to this issue that I talked about, about partnerships. We have a partnership with the federal government about what kind of signage can take place on the interstate. There are also informational signage standards established by communities. And maybe one of the other places to influence is what does your local community say can be on signs in that area. Again, it's not a comprehensive answer, it's a toolkit. One of the challenges that we have in terms of your second question is, we absolutely have to deal with the fact that you and I need to get from point A to point B to be about our day-to-day -day business. But having grown up in an industrial city, I also understand how important it is to move product from that city to other cities. And so while we may, I mean, and again, when we look at um, the demands that we are placing on delivery, on just-in-time delivery today, or what do you mean it's eight o'clock in the morning and it can't be till four o'clock this afternoon that I'm gonna get my package from Amazon or from whomever, it's Prime Day. How dare it take that long? In order to have that kind of delivery system, we have to have large fulfillment centers and those fulfillment centers have to be stocked. And so we not only have to worry about safely moving people, we also have to sort through how do we safely move goods and products so that it coexists. And so while it would be lovely to say the single most important thing subject to nothing safe movement of people walking or the safe movement of people on bicycles. The reality is, is that you cannot meet all of their needs in that way. I say that as a mother who had teenage boys, I'm sorry, as tempting as it might be, I could never do my weekly shopping trip on my bike. That's just not possible. It doesn't mean that I was an irresponsible polluter. It just meant Teenage males and their friends, with all due respect to the fellows in the room, if you've been a mother of a teenager, you understand they are the quintessential perfect eating machine. And so, yes, we have to be, again, remember I talked about equity, having multiple and moving goods. Part of the challenge that we have is absolutely sure you ought to be safe riding your bicycle to your place of employment and returning home or walking your animals. At the same time, if that's the only need we meet, then there's a plethora of other needs that aren't met. And the one, it's how do we find the balancing act to address them in a way that makes sense? Like the image 
is that some of them don't need any help at all. They're doing just fine by themselves. There are others that need some help, need more help than that one. And so how do we balance out so that we end up with an equitable situation, not an equal situation? Thank you. Thank you so much, Gloria. And those are great questions. We've got a few other, we've got more questions in the chat. So we'll try to get to them all here. Some of them are just comments. So if you're, if you're all um, able to look at the chat, read the comments, they're very interesting. Scott has a, um, has a question. Do you want me to read it, Scott, or do you want to give it? I'm just trying to see where Scott is. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, th I think it was more of a comment than a question. Okay. I think it, it kind of speaks for itself. The, you look at corridors like I-94. Um, for instance, right now, there's, you know, sidewalks kind of on the fronted roads and the fronted roads themselves are like highways. And um, basically it just, for the, I, I could be mistaken about this, but I believe that the, the lower you are in the socioeconomic scale, the less like you are to have a vehicle. Um, and so it seems to me that one aspect of equity would be to portion the roadway right of way priority and design such that it actually lifts up those who don't necessarily either have a car or maybe they share a car or maybe they take the bus. And uh, I look at I-94, it feels dangerous to push a stroller, dangerous to walk next to it. And, um, and I, I own a car, but if I didn't have one, I don't think that would be very pleasing. And so I think one form of equity is applied to transportation, including a MnDOT should be to boost those use use prevalent in the different demographic areas. That was my point. Thanks. I would wholeheartedly agree with you. There is a fallacy in your assumption, which is that there is that the possession of an automobile is most frequently denied to those in lower income if the pandemic has taught us nothing else. It is those who, even though they may not have an automobile with all of the 21st century bells and whistles, because of where employment opportunities are for them, they don't live within 15 minutes of where they can walk or bike to work. They, we have as a society, good, bad, or indifferent, have made the decisions that there are certain kinds of land uses that we don't want to mix in residential neighborhoods. And so those jobs are in other places, places where they can't afford to live. So they live where they can afford to live and they work where they can find work. And that's part of the balancing act. And that ability is that it the solution is not simply, oh, give them more room to walk and they will raise up their quality. There is a decision society. I would love for transportation to be the entity, the sole entity that could change all of society around with no help from any other entity. That's not the case. That's why it's so hard to solve the problem. Because if that were the case, I am sure that folks like you would have come to this solution of let's just make transportation it. Transportation is a big piece of the solution. But it's not the only piece of the solution. Thus livability. Right. And it's not just MnDOT. There, MnDOT has no authority with respect to land use. The cities and counties do. So, hey, cities and counties partner with us. Mm -hmm. Don't, no, I'm not putting it on the cities and counties. Oh, you go take care of it. No, how do we partner together to make solutions that work? Great, great comment. I think it's exactly what we want to be doing. So, excellent. Uh, Mary Morris had a question. You can ask it if you want, Mary. Hi, thank you so much, Chair. Um, I, I wanted, first of all, to say to Cheryl, I live right by the corner of Preeton and Marshall, which is a raceway off of 94. So if we want to talk about livability, um, come, come visit me and we'll stand on the corner of Creton and Marshall and experience uh, the feeling. Even at tw posted 25 miles per hour, I think people have slowed down to maybe 35. So that's 
So that's pretty good. Um, this is all very important stuff. I always appreciate hearing from Gloria and, and Brian and the MINVAT team. Um, when I was with Move Minneapolis, we had the opportunity to speak with people who lived in other parts of the country who are now rethinking their own highways. Uh, one of the most interesting right now is I-94 in Milwaukee. Um, of course, I-10 and others uh, down, down south um, in New Orleans. And communities are thinking of their highways um, in really big ways. They're thinking about everything up to and including removing them. And I'm hoping that here in the Twin Cities in Ramsey County, we can go that far. And if anyone wants to go to the Move Minneapolis site, the entire session is live. It's right there, three hours long. Um, the most interesting new way of thinking about livability that, that turns what we have come to expect on its head, gives us some opportunity to think about our lives differently. We don't have to poison children and give them asthma to get folks to the city. In fact, most of the people on I-94 are traveling three miles or less in this section. Why do we even need a highway? So I really encourage all of you. It's, it's a big step for a lot of us who haven't been steeped in this stuff, uh, but it's very important. And I have a very nerdy question, but for Gloria, and that is, I, I still haven't been able to figure out why the livability track was pulled out of the NEPA process, or was it never in the NEPA process? Um, can it be included? Uh, because it, it seems to me that the work you're doing is incredibly important. Thank you. There are several answers. I am going to say this with all of the respect that, that I have for, for folks in the room. The reality is that the folks who made decisions about constructions of highways did not do so out of a sense of malice, did not do it with the intent to poison children, did not do it with the intent of creating disproportionate opportunities for asthma. They were responding to the needs at the time. And while you're absolutely correct, Mary, that there are an array of places that are looking at sections of highways, I am not aware of any movement that has said, eliminate as a class movement, highways in America. There are certain roadways in America where there absolutely should be a re-examination. But I am not aware, nor did I hear in that presentation, a call for the total elimination of all highways throughout America. So let's be very clear in presenting it, that there are aspects of it, again, this balancing act, it isn't all or nothing. There are certain roadways in certain communities where there should be alternatives and they should be undertaken. Back to your second question that had to do with, are there Ne the livability was never a part of the NEPA process. The NEPA process is very rigidly defined. We had lively, passionate conversations with our friends at the federal level about trying to incorporate it. Um, we were unsuccessful in our ability, so we reached an agreement that rather than do nothing, that we would do a parallel track where at appropriate times when we find the opportunity to integrate the two, we would, but you're, you're right. It, the, the answer to your question was, it was never part of the NEPA process. We tried to make it a NEPA process. We were able to compromise with placing it on a parallel track so that we can continue to move toward eventual changes at the national level within the NEPA process. Um, we have a comment by Curtis. Peterson, I don't know if you want to make it, Curtis. It was a good one about our geographic connections. You want to make it, and um, but I'll say it, he was saying some of our largest geographic connection barriers for pet and bike are interstates, railroads, and large bodies of water like rivers and lakes, or private communities like North Oaks. So these are, you know. These are also barriers to our connecting. So it's, uh, it's a good, good point. And then Samantha uh, responding to Cheryl's second comment on, a, on having a social media campaign, short videos showing people commuting 
getting people used to seeing the number of people using the greenway i think it's yeah it's good for for commuting in addition to recreation videos would be short just snippets that could leave people feeling good or seeing how these bike lanes are used uh, perhaps showing a variety of users seniors e-bikes mobility to get people acclimated so that's that's uh really good and then we've got some uh some um uh websites here well, I, I think we could ask you lots of questions, Gloria. I mean, I think we could all talk for a long time. I really appreciate all of your work uh, that you're that you're doing and trying to get us all to move forward together on this. And yes, as a county per as a county uh, person, we definitely want to be partners in that, and we're so excited about having Brian with us so he can help us with that. That's his role to keep us all connected with the cities, the state, everybody. So we, we got a master coordinator with us, a master uh, connector. Um, and uh, and all of you on this call are, are key players, are key players in all of this. Uh, we need to be talking to community, cities, and everyone about that. So, oh, thank you, Gloria. So is it possible like, that we can share this PowerPoint? Connie, do you have the PowerPoint? and? Well, we'll send that out to you all. Um, it's exciting to see this kind of movement by a large organization. It's a it's a systems change for sure that a large organization like MnDOT is really moving in this direction. And of course, we all want to see it done faster. Uh, but to see it being done at all is is really is really great. So um, does we have any closing remarks? If you have any other questions or things, I think you, you put them in the chat, we'll take them later, but um, I'm gonna ask for Brian or Gloria or Peter, if you have any, uh, or Connie, anyone have any closing remarks before we close out this part of the, of the uh, meeting? I have a closing comment, but first, Connie, I made a couple of changes to the PowerPoint after I sent it to you. So let me send you the final version of it. Okay. And then in closing, this is an exciting period. The livability initiative is an exciting one. It's an opportunity for the Minnesota Department of Transportation to not only be a leader in how do we build projects, but to be a partner in bringing about change, to be a facilitator in how we reach solutions. So we're excited about the opportunity to be engaged in it. We think that the Twin Cities metro area is a great proving ground because of the diversity of transportation services and issues. And you will notice that in everything we talked about livability, we talked about services and facilities because we recognize that everything that we do is about highway roads and streets. But that, and with that, I just want to say again, thank you all for allowing me to take this time to be passionate. Thanks for coming. Well, wow, you are super passionate. Okay, Brian, I'll let you say uh, anything else you want to end nope, I'm with. Good. But... I just wanted to thank Gloria for coming. It's always good to hear her thoughts on these things. Well, we are certainly lucky to have you with us here, Gloria, to to share your passion and to, to really demonstrate how what we want to see happening in MnDOT. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Connie or Peter, did you have anything else you wanted Thanks, to Gloria. add? <laughs> <laughs> thank Thanks, you. Thank you, Connie. Peter, anything? I don't know where Peter, he had to leave maybe. Nope, oh no, right he's here. still here. He's still here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Gloria. <laughs> thank you. Oh, wow. Well, this great presentation. We look forward to many more um, connecting and coordinating and just a lot of, of good work being done. So thanks. Thanks again, Gloria. Thank you. We appreciate it. Okay. With that we'll just uh, move on. I, as I said, we're going to, we're going to end our meeting by, by four o'clock today at the, you know, at the latest. So um, I wanted to have um, Brian, if he would talk a little bit about the transportation regional solicitation. Bells, bikeways, sidewalks, and more. And then Dorian um, really can talk about um, uh, that as well. So Brian, you want to start us yeah, off and then Dorian. Yeah, thanks, Mary Jo. Mm -hmm. um, so for those of you who are not aware, the Met Council hosts a regional solicitation every two years. Uh, they solicit for what is on average about $100 million for every for each year. 
and they solicit for a variety of things ranging from transit to bike and ped to trails to roads and bridges and so if you imagine 100 million dollars seems like a lot of money when you spread it across that many categories it doesn't it doesn't cover all the needs and so what ends up happening is the people who apply for those funds bring their own funds to the table and, and supplement that. And so you end up with a lot of, uh, a little bit of stone soup that, you know, people bring a lot of things to the table and you end up with something good. So the, the region allocates a lot of funds. And the reason I raise it here is um, in our group in public works, we've been trying to touch base with all the cities and talk with them about what some of their priorities and interests are relative to the region solicitation. Um, and there's a, a, one of our, oh, uh, Katie. Katie is our friend from Vanda Sites. That's been one of the things that's been a common thread I've heard from her a number of times is we should be doing more on, on uh, a little bit more pedestrian activity, uh, Cola Road. And so that's one that's on the radar, but there are others. And we wanted to just touch base with you as partners and users or uh, you know, interested parties, whatever. Um, to see if you have thoughts on uh, locations or um, or issues that you'd like to see get addressed at the regional solicitation. So I, I, I put it out there just as a conversation piece. If you need more, I can certainly give you more to, to think about relative to that, but um, I'd, I'd love to hear if anybody's got thoughts on. Um, and if you represent an agency that's gonna bring a proposal like our friend Dorian has, has been a successful applicant on a few things in particular this last go around i think it was very successful but um so I'll, I'll just open it up any uh any thoughts do we want dorian to talk about his his coordination while people are thinking or do you what do we, we um i don't know if it met if it's rel totally relevant to this or this question um but if there's any yeah um I, I'm just really grateful that Brian's bringing up. I actually sit on the Transportation Advisory Board. Trista Mattis Castillo is the alternate who's been really serving a lot on that committee because I have a, a conflict at that time, but it's been a great um, board to really uh, learn and try to do really good things for our community on. So, um, Mary Jo, I could, yeah, I could interrupt. Okay. Um, Tony Desnick here. Uh, I was also one of the recipients of the grants this year. And right. um, we're really excited about it. And frankly, without that grant, we would not have been able to do uh, the project. And the project is that we're going to deploy uh, six of our trishaws, the rickshaws, we call them trishaws, two in North Minneapolis, two in Cedar Riverside slash Seward, and then the third somewhere in St. Paul, maybe Midway or the East Side. We're not sure yet in, in terms of having not found partners there yet. Um, but um, we're, we're using the rickshaws as a tool to ease loneliness, food access, uh, transportation options to your physician, to the dentist, to visit friends, to church, whatever it happens to be. You can think of us as a, a replacement to Metro Mobility vans without any lead time and no cost to the user. Um, and we're extremely excited about this and we, we hope to have a hard launch um, next April. Wow, that is that is really exciting. Thank you for that, Tony. That's wonderful. I see Matthew Hollandhead, who's also on tab. Yes. Wait, are you still, yes. Are you still there, Matt? You are still there. I just haven't been there for a while. <laughs> hey, Matthews. So I I could say I have a conflict of interest too, but I wanted to mention that uh, in where I live in Hobbin Park in St. Paul, we have the CP Rail Spur, which needs to be uh, preserved as a public amenity before it gets sold off in pieces and not retrievable. And so I wonder, I'm trying to figure out on TAB and elsewhere, I'm wondering how we channel that into a proposal that keeps the resource without necessarily knowing what it's going to be used for eventually. I mean, uh, probably for bikes, probably for pets, but transit, uh, possibly two, and who knows? Uh, so I wonder uh, how MnDOT and Ramsey County and other jurisdictions treat a resource that's not under our control yet, uh, but needs to be preserved for future use. I just wonder who might have a thought on that. Uh, we are looking at some things at TAB which would 
accommodate what's called unique projects that don't fit into any other category. And I'm hoping this might be an example. So thank you. Thank you, Madam thank, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. It's fun to see you. And I will say I don't have a conflict of interest. I have a conflict in a meeting time. So I have another ah, yeah, meeting. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, we're all interested in all of these things. So my yeah, it's not a conflict of interest. It's just a, a meeting conflict. So that's why right. she's who passionately been serving in my and she's doing a great job. So I'm happy to have her there. But um, anyway, Matthew, great, great, great topic. And just thank you so much for all of your advocacy. You've just been a great, a great well, advocate. So on, have you. On thank you. <laughs> so, so Brian, do you have any thoughts on that or if there's anyone else? Uh, so I think, I think you've raised the challenging point, Matthew, is that that would, in not having control over it and, and not knowing what the use was, the proposal would be, would be challenging, but you know, I'm sure that there are other examples around the, the region that probably fit that bill too, of uh, wanting to preserve a corridor. I don't know that the region has, I don't know that the council has allocated funds to preserve a corridor before, but I know that there have been, uh, there. You, I'm not sure if the, and Peter, maybe you know, if the Ralph fund has been um, retired or not. There used to be a right of way acquisition loan fund, but it was, yeah. I think that it's been retired. It was originally intended for highway expansion. I don't know that it's been used for anything else, but hmm. so that's the only thing that comes to mind. But regional funds are, uh, that would be, that would be an interesting proposal. I'm not sure how well it would, would score, but I, I get your point. Yeah. Once it's gone, it's gone, right? Yeah. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> uh, and once it's used for another purpose to to then come up with an idea and try to buy it at that time would be even more challenging sure you know maybe uh dorian would have deep knowledge of the rails to trails program and some of the rest of you would too and is that i don't know if that's the loan fund you're referring to brian but uh i think 20 years ago there used to be a first right of refusal for counties on rail rights away that were being abandoned or something like that Am I right on that? And what happened to that? Where did that go? <clears throat> I don't think it's gone don't, anywhere. I don't know if it's gone anywhere either, but I think yeah. it's still a federal law uh, that that the local county or state uh, has first right of refusal, and it's you know it's for a period of time. It sometimes it's not very long. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how long it is, but uh, we should definitely check into that. Um, and make sure that, uh, you know, soon as the railroad says we're ready to abandon it, um, that, that the county or, or Met Council or whoever steps in. And yeah. uh, the regional rail authority, you know, because there's a Ramsey County regional rail authority that would um, potentially. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I yeah. will say, I, I think that, that I'm pretty sure that still exists. When I was still in MnDOT, there was a uh, bridge over 94 near 27th, uh, near Prospect Park. That uh, rail bridge got abandoned. But I think you have to get to the point of the rail, the rail uh, company abandoning the right of way. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that may be the trick, is to convince yeah. them that they, they don't need it anymore. Uh, I know there's no more freight on it, but uh, I don't think they've taken that technical step. Right. That's Madam the Chair, yes. seeing there's only 10 minutes left. Can I just give a two minute update? Yep. That's what we're going to let you take it right now, Dorian. Thank you. All I really wanted to say is for those that are concerned with the regional solicitation um, and or safe routes to school, um, that uh, uh, the president's uh, American jobs proposal um, significantly would significantly increase the amount of money uh, allocated to uh, transportation alternatives and safe routes to school. So the pot for the regional solicitation could get a lot better. Um, and that, uh, and, and many of you may have heard the recent debates about the federal infrastructure package and the package the Senate passed, um, which was roads and bridges. Um, it was actually pretty good for biking, walking and safe routes to school, um, but it was very bad on climate and transit. Um, and uh, 
but uh, uh, you know the the assessment is even that bill had 60% more money for transportation alternatives. So my message is simply that the pot is the pie is likely to get bigger. Um, and for those of you who have applied in the past um, and were close, uh, this may be your opportunity to apply and be successful. Um, and, and the Minnesota legislature is likely to appropriate more money um, for this too. So stay tuned, um, monitor those two uh, processes and make sure that uh, you know what's going on. I, I really appreciate that, Dorian. And, and I think uh, what we were saying to be before that if, as much as we can partner, you know, we should, uh, you know, if you think that you want to partner with the, the county or another city, um, you know, we can help facilitate that. But you, um, you know, think about that because sometimes in a partnership, you can put in a, a proposal that might, might score bigger points. So Dorian, I know you, you coordinate a lot of the, the biking proposals and things, but I think, um, I think it would help to have as much, you know, as many partners as possible in some of these proposals. Is that, is that true? Uh, that's true, but I, my message today is just monitor those processes. Okay. Um, if you want to get involved, you can get involved. But uh, uh, for this group, um, you know, just as Brian said, watch the regional solicitation. Um, I'm guessing there's likely to be more money. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to let people know that there's lots of great um, websites, lots of great connecting uh, uh, sites in the in the chat. We will be taking those down. Connie, saving the, the chat. The chat chat automatically saves, so we can we can share those um, those uh, sites with you in our recap of this meeting. So, um, but you can also take them down yourself. But uh, just wanted to let you know that we'll be uh, taking down a, a lot of that information as well. But um, I know that um, we have a few minutes left here. Um, if there's any other updates, I know Kevin Berglund had wanted to talk about Vento and I can stay on a little bit longer than four, um, but I know I said that I would not go further than four. Other, and I'm guessing Vento, the Vento will take a little bit of time. Is there anyone else that has anything they'd like to expand on as far as an update or anything else uh, as far as this meeting goes? Because then, I'm gonna call on Kevin and we can talk about the Vento Trail for a bit here. But um, is there anything else? Uh, Brian, did you have something or? Oh, nope, you're just, I was just here to you're listen. Just, you're, you're just waving your hand. Ideas. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, Mary, is there anything? Uh, yeah. I put a lot in the chat uh, and it has to do with uh, the extending the Midtown Greenway across the river and into Ramsey County. So I just wanted to raise that as an issue because right now, MnDOT is in a position to um, hold back funding, state funding, taxpayer dollars uh, to the local railroad that uh, has right away along that corridor. And uh, it would be really great to have St. Paul um, elected officials and Ramsey County uh, elected officials um, uh, telling MnDOT, you know, this is a once in a lifetime leverage opportunity. The railroad wants something. And as we all know, uh, in this virtual space, uh, railroads uh, have so much uh, authority and power. And uh, so if they need something, uh, we, can, we can use this to bring them to the negotiating table uh, and, and, and finally work out a memorandum of understanding to share that bridge. It was studied just a couple years ago to, uh, to be feasible. Um, so I, I don't wanna take up uh, a lot of time here, but um, I've shared some links um, in that thread and uh, would, it would be really helpful for folks to talk to, uh, send, a, send a message to uh, Minda and Margaret Anderson Kelleher, commissioner um, and their legislators saying, let's not let this opportunity, uh, once in a lifetime opportunity uh, fall through the cracks. And I'm happy to answer any questions Great. online or offline about it. I could just- Yeah, Tony, uh, yeah. Piggyback onto what Joshua was saying. Um, in the city of Helsinki, they made a copy of our greenway in an abandoned railroad. And they've since added, I think another 150 kilometers to the 
place. One of the things that they discovered, which is critical, I think, for us here in the US, is that for every euro they invested in that network, they got eight back. Oh. And so when going to our electeds and saying, spend money on this, it isn't really spending money, it's spending, it's investing money where you'll see a direct return. Now, one caveat is that half of the of the savings or half of the return on investment went directly to healthcare, which because it's state run figures much more neatly into the kind of the equation. But still, um, if I could get four euros back for every euro I invested, that wouldn't be a bad thing either. Well, I, I really appreciate this. And this was brought up at our last meeting. And so I think we'll be checking into that, whatever we can do. But uh, yes, we should be leveraging railroads a lot more, I think. Um, and I can talk to Brian about that. You know, How can we do that with all the work that we're trying to do? And railroads really are a player in a lot of this. And they're not, I, 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 I think they should be coming to the table more. So we'll do what we can at Ramsey County for that. And um and so I don't know if you want to comment on that, Brian, but thanks for bringing that up again. And there's a website you can go to for that. And I actually want to give Michelle a little, just a minute to talk about Boost the Bus, because I've heard about it now and I want to hear about it if you want to talk about it. But Brian, do you want to just say anything about oh, the railroad? Go ahead and let Michelle go. <laughs> okay. Oh, just just that. A quick uh, move Minnesota, not to be confused with move Minneapolis, <laughs> but it involves Minneapolis, um, is has a, uh, it's called boost the bus campaign and it's just about uh, doing some simple fairly low cost in the big scheme of things. Uh, uh, items to make your bus trip shorter and even though my bus trip shorter would be like a minute if you multiply that by the hundreds of thousands of people and hundreds of thousands of trips it adds up and it adds up to about 40 hours a year per person. So um, feel free to hit the website for more information about how you can help us make that happen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Michelle, for your work on that. And, and what I'm going to ask all of you, too, is like for our next meetings, you know, we meet quarterly. If you have any any uh, issue areas that you'd like us to bring up at a meeting or if there's any, you know, obviously we give you time to share, but there's anything that you'd like to talk about, bring it up. You know, let us know, let me know, let Connie know, Brian, whoever, you know, Peter, um, let, uh, let us know what, um, any things that you'd like us to talk about at an active living meeting, because we really are uh, here to uh, move all of these great issues forward. And we're happy to think about whatever, you know, else you might, whatever things you might want to talk about. So just wanted to put that plug in for that. Um, there's, okay, I, I, I definitely, I'm going to stay on. If anyone wants to talk about the Vento uh, trail uh, issue area, I want to hear about that, Kevin. Um, I, Brian has a Just question. one quick yeah. thing. So, yeah. so Joshua, to, to your point, Ramsey County has, has sent a letter to the commissioner and the chair of the council, largely in support of what, what you've been asking. I think we, we would ask that they, they work together to try to find some sort of compromise. Um, so just so that you're aware, if, if there's an interest, that letter can be shared around. Thanks. That is news to me, Brian. I have not heard that in any of our uh, conversations. If you could share that with me, I'll put my uh, email in the chat. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, Josh. I'm really glad that we did that, Brian. I know because when we heard about this, I think both Tristan, I mean, Tristan and I are, I mean, I, I went and I'm like, okay, what can we do for this? And so I'm sure Brian was maybe already on it, but um I, uh, I'm glad we, I'm glad we did that as well. And so, yeah, share that with Joshua. That would be great. And Commissioner McGuire, I just want to let you know, we advertise the meeting till 430. So I think we just, if we do the Vento, I think a lot of people might stay on. Oh, okay. Um, so Super. Uh, I, I think you were like being eager to get everyone out, which is awesome. I just want to let you know that people were expecting to stay until 430, but we, oh, okay. uh, I just don't want to cut anybody off about the Vento trail has been a big um, big push. deal yeah. right thank you thank you connie i appreciate that you're right i heard about a number of people who had to leave at four so i thought well maybe we could do this by four that's why I, yes we should we can definitely stay till 4 30 that would be my cutoff time because i have um to be gone then but we definitely can stay on and i see we have our parks and work director mark mccabe on the call as well uh who has joined us but um, I, I'm, I really do want to learn about the Vento Trail because it is a big deal for all of us. So um, with that, uh, why, don't we, um, why don't we talk about, 
about that then. Kevin, did you wanna just give us what your concerns are on that or what you were thinking about for that? He may, while well, he's unmuting here. Um, oh, oh, there he is still. But um, yeah, I mean, this is a trail that we're all interested in and I, I'm not sure what the, yeah, what the, Status is Kevin. Are you there? Did you want to share? Uh, I don't know where he is, but does anyone else have? Well, if anyone else has anything else they'd like to um, uh, bring up, or if you want to talk about anything on the Vento Trail until we can get Kevin here. Um, this is Tony. I'd like to make a plug for good wayfinding on the Vento Trail. I use it to get to Costco from my house in Highland Park, and I get lost three out of four times. <laughs> I'm all for w more wayfinding on these roads. I am with you 100%, Tony. When I'm biking, I am like, we need better trail, better trail signage. So I, I agree with that. And I see um, Mark McCabe, I think, is, is maybe going to want to say something, and then I'm going to call on Dorian, too. So Mark, did you have yeah, something? I, I'm, I'll yeah. Make, I'll make the note about wayfinding. And then uh, <laughs> I wasn't able to join at the beginning of the meeting, so I don't know what the discussion or questions specifically to the Vento Trail are. Um, we, we as the Parks Department have been working on phases of design. So there's uh, Highway 96 to County Road J, I believe, um, design. Road. So I, I'll take a look at the two sections. So we're basically designing two sections. The you know one starting at Highway 96 is um, further along in the process, um, and then there was this discussion about you know other um, federal funding um, that Scott Yankee, our development director, the director of development, goes goes through to try to solicit for uh, federal funding to, to build that out. Have a number of different requests out um, to try and get that section built. So right now we're, like I said, we're heavily in the design phase and trying to move into uh, eventually obtaining funding to build out the next site. Uh, I can go to Dorian here and write down any other questions too, and have Scott follow up or if there's any other follow-ups after the meeting. That's fine. Yeah. That would be great. And we'll go to Dorian, Mark. Um, and I think I mentioned before, he's our director of parks and recreation, which we so appreciate. Um, if people do have sign signage questions like, oh, this would be a good place to have a sign <laughs> or a better sign. Do we just like forward that on to parks? You probably, uh, do we have on our website, you know, input to parks and rec? I, I feel yeah, like we're, re we're redoing our website all the time. Box. You can send suggestions to you, but um, yeah, all of our email addresses are the same. It's first name, dot, last name. So mark, dot, McCabe, and co, dot, amz, dot, amen, dot, us. Uh, I can send a, send a message if there's something specific to, to parks related to items. Thanks. I think it's getting way better than when I started. Um, uh, the signage is is uh, improving, so thanks. This one sign that says Costco with Great. an arrow. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> yes, I love it. Okay, Dorian. Well, I just wanted to comment that the the Vento Trail is a rail banked um, uh, right of way, meaning it was acquired from the railroad um, with that federal law. And it was very clear when it was purchased that it was being purchased um, to protect the rail right of way in case it was to be used in the future um, for railroad. So unlike the gateway trail, which was purchased in fee um, without using the rail banking law. Um, so DNR owns the gateway trail. There's no strings attached, um, but I don't, is it the rail authority or Ramsey County that owns the, the, the Vento trail and they purchased it with that rail bank law. Um, so there are some uh, um, restrictions basically that if, if the powers that be, and I believe that's what uh, 
uh, was mentioned in the chatter as a comment before um, was, was that you know putting a rail uh, railroad back there um, would wreck the trail. And I don't necessarily disagree, um, but you know rules are rules, and it was purchased with that rule. So, and, the, and is that in perpetuity? Is that rule? I mean, until we would buy it outright, we are regard we are re um, restricted by those restrictions. Then is that is that right or what? Um, and we're, we're seems like we're investing a lot into that. If it's not really ours, or if it's not really the well, DNR it's, or ours. Oh. It's definitely yours, and maybe Brian can offer up some more. Okay. Details. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So thanks. We purchased the Vento Trail with the expressed intent of pursuing a transitway along the corridor. That was the purpose. And so I believe it's even been signed that way since we took ownership of the property through the rail authority. And so I, I think that if I understand Kevin's concern, because I think we've heard it from in another a number of different forums, is that what we've experienced in the intervening time period between purchasing the property and now has been a nice trail. And there's concerns about what that what that experience will be like when we build the transitway, when we build rush line. And that's that's a concern. And I I, I totally respect that concern, but like Dorian said, we purchased the property with the express intent of having a transit way there. And that was, that's why we spent the funds to do it. Brian, is the, is the transit way for a streetcar or a light rail or what? For BRT? Bus rapid transit. Okay. And we just, we, we heard a presentation on this and yes, um, we, um, we know that there's going to be impacts and right that is the balancing i think that you have with um we we, we definitely want to um you know be be balancing out the interests of transit bike riders bikers walkers you know and things like that so hopefully we'll i mean i i know all of the public comment has been hearing a lot of this and taking this into consideration so sure. it's not the ex it's not the entirety of the Rupento trail and it's not and the, there will still be bike and ped facilities along with it. It's just that it changes the nature of it, right? Mm -hmm. Matthew. Well, I just wanted to comment something I've been concerned about for quite a long time is that I, uh, we should not view transit and biking as uh, mutually exclusive because right. bikes can be put on trains, bikes can be put <laughs> on buses. And when you build a rush line and when you build a blue line or any other major transit way, uh, what we should also be talking about is how many bikes can we put on a train? How many bikes can we put on a bus? And, and if we need more slots, uh, then let's talk about that because there hasn't, I don't think there's been enough emphasis on that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, always a good comment. Thank you, Matthew. I agree. That's good. Thank you, <laughs> Mich Michelle. Michelle is I'm, I'm going to piggyback on, on Matthew's comment uh, because uh, I have a fat bike and I don't have a cargo bike yet, but sometimes my fat bike trips, um, I take more, I could put it on a bus, which I can't right now, but I can put it on a light rail. So um, fat bike and, and cargo bike friendly transit, uh, especially light rail, of course, um, I think is uh, of value. Mm -hmm. And and I will also say that uh, for the first time in good news, I finally made it over to Como Avenue to ride the new bike ped infrastructure to get to car to get to back to the 50s and uh it was delightful except there were there were too many pedestrians in the bike lane but other than that it was a, it was good so the, that is on a bicycle to get to a car rally <laughs> that is a I like that. Multiple that's a great story person what can... <laughs> oh, that is a great fantastic. story <laughs> Oh, yes, and that is a great bike path on Como there. I agree. It's a wonderful path. Uh, the pathways that are going in everywhere are just so amazing. So, Dory. To add a little further clarification about the rail banking law is that um, until it was passed in 1983, I believe, um, railroads were all almost all, and when they ceased being used for railroad or transportation purposes, um, 
they reverted to the adjacent landowners. No money exchanged. Um, and, and that's why they passed the rail banking law um, that allowed uh, corridors to be uh, for future rail use rather than reverting to the adjacent landowner. And that's where Ramsey County stepped in and, uh, and made that possible. They purchased the easement, I, okay. I believe. Did we purchase the easement? By, yeah, back to my law school days. Those are, that's just interesting, Dorian. I, I'm grateful to know that history um, and that I don't know whether the Um, okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm grateful to those of you that knew something about, um, yeah, what, what the issues were around the Vento Trail, that all, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that are, those are issues that I have heard, uh, before, and I, I wasn't, um, all sure what, um to bring up i am i'm so grateful for all of your work for the greenway extension for the busa bus for all all the work all of you are doing to you know dorian and matthew tony everything that you're doing to um promote this uh walkability bikeability livability um i'm a huge biker as, as i think most of you know and uh but don't get to bike everywhere i want to go i'm not as brave as michelle and and then carlos but um, or, or a lot of you on this call maybe, but I um, I try to try to use my bike when I can. So Dorian, did, now is your hand up? Again, it or is. Are you still up from before? You know, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> way back early in the conversation, and then I've got to run for another meeting. Yeah. Which, uh, late. Uh, we did get. Uh, we did submit a proposal to the regional solicitation, the Bicycle Alliance of Minnesota did, to take over Cycles for Change Adult Learner Ride Program. And we were granted um, uh, the money to do that. Uh, so starting in October, we will begin planning for 2022. Um, 10 uh, new locations, Cycles for Change was doing Minneapolis and St. Paul. Uh, we decided that we weren't going to run a bike shop. Uh, we were going to use the money they used to run the bike shop. Um, to expand the program, uh, mostly to inter-ring suburbs um, and, uh, and trying to reach out to some new. Uh, it includes community liaisons. Um, so it, it hopefully will be people uh, from the community that we partner with uh, that'll actually be doing, we'll train to Love do it. the adult. Congratulations. Program. That is wonderful. I love that. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Our our Roseville resident biker Gene is is uh got his bike. It looks like he's coming from his bike. So Brian has Thank to you. go. Yes, I think we're we're all unfortunately, Gene, we're ending this call. Thanks everyone for being here. This was Thank a great you. conversation. You'll get the minutes. If you're just joining us, and uh, we just really appreciate everyone's work. So thanks, Connie. Thanks, thanks, Jean, for joining us for a short time. But uh, we're we're now uh, ending the meeting, and uh, we'll hopefully see you at the at our next meeting. So take care, everyone. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Hi, Jean. Gene, it's so fun to see you. <laughs> oh, we can't hear you, Gene. Can you hear me now? Now we can. Now I'm we over, can. I'm over at the Ramsey County Ditch Project. Oh. Over by Byerly's, and they're making great progress. Are they? I have. I. I was over there a while ago, but I got to get over there again. Okay. I took some videos, and I was gonna. I didn't realize it was going to be over. I was going to try to get them 
out so you can see them, but I'll probably just uh, email them. Yeah, do. That'd be great. I'd love to see it. Love and to see it. Well, thanks for joining us on your bike. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, uh, I uh, didn't get in the early part of the meeting, but I'll have to look at the, uh, the, the write-up. Okay. Yeah. We, it was some good stuff. So you'll get some, you'll get some presentations and stuff. It, it was good. good, but we missed you, but that's okay. Enjoy your, enjoy being outside. Yes. <laughs> Thank okay. you. We'll see ya. Bye. -bye. See ya. Bye.